A recipe today is wild game meatballs. This, uh, you can make this with beef or other ground meats with, without it being wild game, but wild game just tastes so much better. Uh, if you use sausage, then it's already got the seasoning in it. If you have ground meat but no seasoning in it, the recipe that you'll be able to find online uh, gives suggestions of to add like Italian seasoning or oregano to taste if you're using just plain meat. So one pound of sausage into your mixing bowl. And that's about a meatball's worth still in that package, so that's why I'm working to get that out. And 16 ounces of grated uh, cheese, usually cheddar cheese. I like sharp cheddar myself, and I'm going to chunk up uh, or break up the meat some just so it helps with the mixing process. I'll put part of, whoops, part of the cheese in the meat as well as on the table and do a little bit of pre-mixing with that because you'll really want to get it all mixed through and we'll add the rest of it here in a little bit. And then two to three cups of biscuit mix can be whatever your favorite is, Pioneer, uh, Bisquick, um, any others that you might like to use. And I'd suggest mixing it in in about one cup increments because depending on how much fat has been added to your venison, um, you don't want to have too much of the biscuit mix uh, and it not really uh, help the, the uh, meatballs hold together. So I'm just squeezing this with my hands to work that biscuit mix in and break up the sausage more so that everything's getting mixed together. Now these make a wonderful hors d'oeuvre or you can make them and then still uh, serve them with a, a sauce and have them even over pasta if you'd want. But they're, they're great as a, an hors d'oeuvre or just a snack. So we'll add the rest of the cheese because the melting cheese is what really will help hold it together. Now you don't want to make these meatballs too large. If, they, if you do, they have a tendency to break apart. You want them larger than a marble, but those of us that are old enough to remember steelies, if you got to play marbles, that's about the size that you want to go for. And I think for this particular meat, we'll use more biscuit mix, but only about another half cup and it's easier to put it in a little bit at a time than to end up with too much in there and can't, can't call it back. Again, you can do these in your oven at home on a cookie sheet. Cleanup's easier uh, if you do use uh, parchment paper. If you've got it, you can use foil. I any more prefer uh, parchment paper just it seems to be easier to work with. So I've already put a piece of parchment paper in this Dutch oven, but working outside, when you take the lid off, you're gonna have to hold on to that parchment paper until you get a few meatballs in there so it doesn't go airborne. So, about that size and we'll make them and until we get a few in there we'll set the lid back on each time. They don't have to be perfect unless you're wanting to use them in a competition of some sort because uh, they could be a prize winner as well. These also uh, like a lot of things that you bake will cook at about 350 degrees if you ever have a recipe that doesn't tell you a temperature, a good fail-safe is to assume everything will be at 350. And then you can always cook it a little longer if you need to. But you're really going to squeeze this together with your hands so that they're more likely to hold together. And we'll just keep filling the oven 
until all of our sausage and cheese and biscuit mix is used up. Uh, our wild game meatballs we put in a 12 inch oven and again you double the size of the diameter of your oven for your total number of coals you need to get at 350 degrees. You want less heat underneath so I've put nine coals underneath and I will put 15 on top so that you've still got your 24 total but with less heat in underneath. And then you want to set your oven down. If it doesn't set level at first, just kind of pick it up and move it around. It's one leg, there's three legs underneath, one leg's trying to set on a coal, and that's why it's not level, and so you can, can work with that until it's setting level. Then, and again, evenly spaced so that you're uh, not going to have a hot spot and then have a burned place. And we will we'll do 15 on top, again, for that 350 degree temperature. And if you happen to have a recipe that doesn't tell you what temperature, if, if you're essentially baking whatever you're doing, assume 350 and then you can always let it cook longer. There's 13, and then we can put one on each side of the handle of the oven. And again, evenly spaced. And again, we'll, about every three to five minutes, pick up the oven, give it a quarter turn. Now, on dishes like this, it's not as critical as if you were baking a cake and had one side of it still soupy instead of looking like a cake, like you'd want it to. And once your coals burn smaller than a, f a freshly lit briquette, you can start adding more of those small pieces to try to still keep your temperature amount up uh, for, uh, to finish off a dish. Now, if we were just starting a dish, this wouldn't still be producing enough heat to really get something baked, but it will keep temperature going to finish off the last few minutes of a recipe. All right, now we'll check our wild game meatballs. They should be done. Yes, definitely. Now, if they're done. You could let them set a little bit longer to brown more on top if you wanted, having coals left on the top of the oven. Uh, but they're done and ready to plate. Now, these, again, are good if, with a dipping sauce. Uh, we've got one that's uh, called a Bing Cherry Mord. Danta, if I remember the name correctly. It's a recipe that I got from my husband and son. And then also a uh, cranberry sauce and horseradish mix uh, that you could put on the side and then just cut off a bite and be able to try the different sauces. Or a spicy mustard is always a good bet as well. So with a wild game recipe, you found even more about the versatility of Dutch ovens how fun they can be to cook in, uh, for the heritage, heritage that's involved with them, and best of all, the really good food.